Our cab my owners have a number of tire combinations, bushwick combinations that they might consider. Uh, on the early King Katmai, I had the red and white one that was in all the magazines for all those years. I had a low pressure, I, I call it a Tundra tire. It's very similar to the, what the Cubs and Huskies have. It's a 9 PSI tire. Worked really good. Flew with it for about a year and a half or so, and it worked really well. The only thing I didn't really like about it was the tire looked a bit frail for an airplane this big and heavy. Um, I'd had a problem in the past where I'd been out in the middle of nowhere and I, I cut a tire on a really sharp rock and had a little bit of an issue, so I'm kind of sensitive to that. And this tire looked like it might cut or puncture for an airplane this heavy fairly easy. Uh, the other thing was after about 120, 30, 40 hours and about a year, a little over, um, I started having cords showing on the tire. And of course, I fly the backcountry a lot, but I also fly a lot off paved runways. And I don't know if it was the scuffing of the tires when I landed or when I stabbed a brake to turn it around, but nonetheless, the tires were pretty well wore out in about, about 120 or 30 hours. So I thought, well, I want to do something a little bit different. Went to a rigid sidewall Airhawk tire. And generic term I use would be a 29-inch tire, which is what we've got on here now. And I had a shave tire. And the 29-inch Airhawk shaved, I thought, gave me really good service. It was tough. It took cuts, nicks. I mean, I never had any trouble with it. The only thing I didn't like about that was when the tire was shaved, the balance point changed. And at that time, it made putting the tires on and balancing it in the field really difficult. So I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll go to a treaded tire and eliminate that problem. And going to the treaded tire, the only thing I worried about was maybe picking up some small rocks and pitching them back into the tail. Now, I've had these tires on here for seven, eight, nine years. I've never had an issue with that, so I don't really worry about that anymore. And one of the things I really like about the treaded tire is I don't think that there's going to be much of anything that's going to cut or puncture this tire. I mean, the tread's deep. It really looks tough. The other thing I like compared to the, the Tundra tire with a, with a softer sidewall is the rigid tires are a little bit better in a crosswind landing because they, they hold the rigidity a little bit better. So... I ended up with a 29-inch treaded tire, been very happy with it. Now, you've also got the choice of the same tire, whether it's shaved or treaded, in a 26-inch, a little bit smaller. One of the things I like about the 29 is that it picks the tail up. The airplane sits in a normal attitude. It's just a lot higher off the ground with a lot better prop tip clearance. The 26 is okay because we've got a lot of customers with them, and they're doing fine, but the tail sits a little bit lower. So for me personally, I like the 29-inch. Uh, common to all the tires that we have, no matter what size and combination, is an 850 by 6 nose wheel tire with an air glass fork. That's common to a 26 inch tire, 29 inch tire, or the, or the Tundra tire. So we use an 850 on the nose, and you've got kind of a choice on the mains. In the past, I've done other combinations, 600 on the nose, 800 on the mains, and with that long nose wheel fork, it pushes the nose up quite a ways, which is good for prop tip clearance. But the problem is with a smaller tire on the main wheel, the tail sits really low. I don't like taxing it that way, and the tail picks up a ton of trash. So the only combination I've really found that works for me in the backcountry is an 850 on the nose with either a 26 or a 29-inch main. Now, these tires I've also found seem to inflate at about 25 PSI about right for me. More than 25 PSI, the center starts kind of wearing out a little bit. Below 25 PSI, they get kind of hard to push. Now, I've flown these airplanes down to about 16 PSI in these tires, and they work fine. Some people were a little concerned that as the tire pressure dropped way down, under really heavy braking, the tire might slip a little bit on the wheel and shear the valve core off. Never had that issue. But at 16 PSI, especially off airport, it's a hard airplane to push. So 25 PSI seems to be the best combination all the way around. I take them into the back country with 25 PSI. Now the other thing is, is with our keen eyes, there we've got standard tires with a wheel pant, with a speed pant. Now those tires need to be inflated to 50 PSI and probably a third of the 260 SEs and keen eyes that come in here, the main wheels are underinflated. And the reason they need to be 50 PSI is because the wheel pant, to get the drag reduction, is fit very tightly to the bottom. The bottom of the wheel pants fit very tightly to the, to the tire. A uh, regular Cessna wheel pant, you know, most of them we take off, they have a huge hole down there where the tire pokes out. And, of course, that generates a lot of turbulence, which is drag. So on the keen eyes, with the speed wheel pants that are aerodynamically cleaned up, 
that hole in the bottom is reduced to, to where the wheel pan only maybe has a quarter to three eighths of an inch of clearance all the way around on the tire. So it's important you keep 50 PSI on those because if it's below, if it's like 30, 35 PSI, that tire squishes out and it could rub on the wheel pan. Another thing with the keen eye that a guy kind of has to watch is when you taxi in and somebody slides chocks under the airplane. The front chalk is usually not an issue. If they get a back chalk in, you have to be very careful because I've had customers in the past that have kicked the front chalk out and they've gotten the airplane fired up and tried to taxi away and usually when that happens the tail comes down a little bit and the back of the wheel pan won't clear that wheel chalk, rolls the wheel chalk up and breaks out the bottom of the wheel pan. So the, the moral of the story here is if you've got wheel chalks on a Kenai, be sure you remove both the front and the back ones before you go. And, uh, and another interesting little side note is we've done some Kenai's in the past where we've had both sets of landing gear for them. Uh, you know, guys will want to kind of go up in the back country maybe once or twice in the summer and the rest of the time they want to go someplace and they need the cruise speed. So you can put these same bush wheels on a Kenai. Now, when the Kenai is set up with both sets of landing gear, it, it's, it's not a big job to swap them out, but it's kind of like I tell everybody, it's a bigger job than I do every week, but for a couple, three times a year, it's not such a bad deal. If you have both sets of gear for a Kenai, the, the streamlined gear and the bush wheels, it'll take a, a mechanic probably about a day to swap out the tires and go to the bush wheels. So, you know, you can have that tire combination with a Kenai. It makes an excellent all-round airplane. you got the big bush wheels and the Katmai. Now that you know the sizes, you can kind of think about it, make an intelligent decision, and you'll be happy.